So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Hi, villains, and welcome to Further Love of Paul McGrath Podcast. Post match for Zrinsky Mostar versus Aston Villa, or Aston Villa versus Zrinsky Mostar. And what I must say is that uh, look, a win is a win is a win. Three points uh, at home uh, against a team who are really, really dogged. I, like I always, I always feel like I'm kind of patronising a small bit when I start saying things like, you know, they came there, they came for a point, and they were good for a point, and they they defended resolutely, and they put their bodies on the line, and they blocked. Because you kind of expect professional football st- football teams to do that, but fair play to Zrinski Mostar. Like they were, they were really well, um, really well marshaled tonight. Really well uh, structured. Really well set up. Um, came here, the coach looked like he had them absolutely humming, um, like league champions would be, and uh, they proved an absolutely really really stern test for Aston Villa. Were Aston Villa on their on their A game? Absolutely not. First half. I, I genuinely don't have anything to say about the first half other than uh, Nicolas Zaniolo's um, uh, bicycle kick. Uh, but Aston Villa come out one nil winners with a 95th minute header of all things from John McGinn. Um, I think Villa were good for their win. We can be frustrated with how they played. Like I'm going to get into it in a moment, but the, like there's a couple of players there that like Aston Villa players that just. Put it this way, if I was a 16-year-old kid on TikTok, there'd be absolutely like I'd be screaming into the phone about one or two one or two Aston Villa players because I just thought that they were poor tonight. Um I thought certain players didn't show up. I thought certain players needed to, and they were absolutely MIA for a lot of the game. I think Matty Cash was absolutely outstanding when he came on. I think uh, Douglas Luiz came on and showed how much we miss him and that the number eight that we have on our team uh, is not an able replacement for him at all. Um, one of the players that just has me screaming internally uh, every time he gets the ball is Yuri Tielemans. But all in all, a, a Thursday night game that we've won and the football wasn't perfect, but onwards, I suppose, within Europe now to the next game that we have and onwards towards Wolves, I suppose, at the weekend. I'm going to come to some of your comments here because I think, look, and I think it's okay. Actually, sorry, before we do that, Paddy often does something where he opens up a can in celebration uh, when we win a game. And considering it's the first game we've won in Europe, in European competition proper, I think I said I'd mark it with a, an opening of a can. So there we go, Aston Villa. Whoa, it's a fraudy one too. There we go, Aston Villa. Hopefully we'll, be, we'll have many more um, wins in Europe and many more great nights that we can celebrate um, as the season goes on. And hopefully we've got uh, full 90-minute performances um, as opposed to last 20 minute or last 45 minute um siege action performances uh in that game um one little thing before i get onto it as well before we start looking at your comments and discussing the game um and i'm go- i really feel like i'm taking paddy's uh paddy's place in the podcast now but my god was that referee atrocious today he was absolutely woeful um just didn't really even look like he was interested in the game and then he was giving he started off giving things giving everything he was a bit touchy then he didn't give anything. And how in the name of Jesus you don't give a penalty for the for the short pull on Nicolas Zaniola? I give up. You've got eyes in the sky, you've got eyes in the ground, you've got linesmen in the in the ground as well. And you can't see a fella has the short extended back two yards from a man's body. Give me a break. Like that's that's a definite penalty, but um, he got the other penalty decision cor- uh, wrong in real time, but obviously I thought it was the same in real time. I thought it was a handball, and then he gets it right there when he looks at the, at the video, and that's cool. That's what VAR is for, and I absolutely applaud him for that. Absolutely no problem with that. But if VAR can intervene in that instance, and they can intervene for the short pull, I don't know. And for anybody listening to an audio, my hands are thrown in the air. That's essentially what I'm doing here. Paddy Kelly's going to hop on. I don't know where he is, but he's going to hop on there. Paddy, Paddy, how are you? None the better for that night. Your fringe is mile in the air. 
there's a lot of head and hand moments, I think, during that oh, 90 I'd minutes. Say, yeah. pretty... I'd say that's what's happened, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Jesus. Um, we, we said it in the preview. You, you play your best team or you struggle. Um, I just, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost for words, boy. We can't play our best team, but look, maybe maybe he thinks we're, well, we're going to get Champions League football. I don't know. Four, four, or th- well, three of our best team were injured. It was really yeah. like really many Watkins and Watkins, Cash, and, and Douglas Louise, and they played half the game tonight. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying. I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not buying the 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 whole. We didn't start our best team. That's why we only won the 95th minute uh, argument because we were flat in the first half, and that's fine. But we, he rectified it at half time, and he brought on the players. I think, but most of them were good, were resolute. Um, it's just like, like realistically, like we 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 were flat in the first half. That is fair, but when we when we did play those players in the second half, uh, we got the one 0 win, albeit in the ninety fifth yeah, minute. We, we, we were all we were over. Flat, them. We were flat in the first half when they tried to attack, but in the second half they didn't really attack. They 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 decided that Do you know what we're we're going to go to a Premier League team, get a point here, and this is a huge result for us. And that's what they yeah, decided they yeah. after after 65, 70 minutes. They literally barely attacked. Now, I know Emmy Martin has to make a save. One that was offside at the end. He made made some great... The, the day, in the first half, they had the best chances. But look, mm. I, we, we said it in the we said it in the, in the preview, not so much today because we were, you know, full of enjoyment of, of getting into, into our first home European game. But you need to play your best team. I, I don't care what anyone says. You need to play your best team. You need to win their home games, and I, like I'm not saying that's that's the reason they did make it difficult for us, and we need to give them more respect because they played very well, they defended very well, and that's the reason why we're here, why I'm on here because I, I I should be I should be sitting in there having a point going. We won today three 0 and that was handy enough, but it wasn't handy enough. They made they made it they made us work very hard for that goal. We got the goal in the end, and that's the most important thing. So, so I suppose my my uh, the way I'm thinking about it here now is Unai Emery is actually because we got the win, regardless of how we got it, Unai Emery is vindicated because he only has ninety, he only has forty five minutes in in uh, Watkins' legs, he only has forty five minutes in in Douglas Luiz's legs, and he only has forty five minutes in uh, in Matty Cash's legs, and we've got Wolves at the weekend because you know he still did start some players. The only like Pau Torres obviously didn't get any uh, get any minutes. Um, yeah. Over the course of, the course of that game, but I suppose he can he can seem he's vindicated within within his in his decisions as my child makes an inopportune time to wake up. I think she's going to go back to sleep on her own. Um, Hopefully, maybe but she look, won't. I, you you say he's vindicated. I think he's vindicated at four o'clock on Sunday if we go and beat Wolves. Then he's vindicated. If we don't beat Wolves on Sunday, then but so but but if but. <laughs> So he can't we win. Won. We won't. No, no, he can win. He can win. He, of course, he can he win. Why, why can't yeah, so, he? Like, like, so if if we do, if we draw one all with Wolves, then it's all Emery's fault because he had to bring players off the bench for forty five minutes. Doesn't make sense. No, like, it really doesn't. No. no, if he if he plays his full team from the start, we and and we play better on Sunday, that makes a huge difference. It's continuity. It's players. It's players playing off results. We've won ten home league games in a row. We've won in Europe. And now we go into playing wolves and we beat wolves. It's 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 not as cut and dried as that. It's it's just there's continuity there. The players are playing well. Keep them in the team. Keep them doing well. We're going into an international break. That's why I said play your full team. That's why I said it in the preview. And we struggled. No, no don't don't get me wrong. We knew we knew that the day put her up to AZ Alkmaar. They came back. They came back after being three 0 down and one four three. They're obviously a decent side. Obviously, a well-organized, decent side, and it's going to be difficult to go and beat them over there. But we needed to beat them tonight. We got the result in the end, but it was fucking hard work. I I think we're there's there's no point in us just having. I think I think he's completely vindicated. I I don't think they're bringing three players off for forty five. I actually I think that so. So there's the, the alternate logic that a lot of people have because they're the only three players that you would have started, I'd say, in okay, you would maybe Pau Torres, all right. Clement Longley was grand tonight, he was absolutely fine. We, yeah. we didn't have didn't have much to do. But so let's just say you start those players and we're nil all at half time. And I know it's all hypothetical, so no matter what we're talking about, it's hypothetical. We're nil all at exactly. half time. 
And then next thing, Villa still win in, in the 95th minute with a with a John McGinn header. And then we started our full team. And then you go into Wolves, and everyone's talking about Jesus our first eleven any any good after beating Brighton six one. I just think it's I think it's I think it's a bit reactive. I I, I but look as I say, I th- I think he's he's been vindicated. I think he will be vindicated. Obviously, you're right in what you say. If we go out and beat Wolves, no one can have any complaints about what happened tonight. Yeah. But uh, I think I think at the end of the day, you know, if you if you're you know, he had to name him on the bench and he was willing to use them when he needed to use them. And whether he started them and brought him off after 60 minutes or didn't start them and brought him on at half time, I think he, I think by the conviction of his, of, of his actions, we've gone on to win the game. And I think he can, he can look back and he can go, yeah, the first half was shite. I had to bring those players on. But if he had started those players in the first half was still shite, I think he'd have a lot more questions to ask or to answer, should I say. So I suppose we're kind of both right in a lot of ways. We're both right because, uh, because neither of the two of us can prove. Who, who would have been right in the hypothetical situation? Well, we won the match. We won the match. That's the most yeah. important thing. So, so Emery was right. And, and in fairness to him, he was a lot calmer than I was looking at him <laughs> sitting there. Oh, yeah. And he, he looked, he took totally calm throughout the match. And it was, o- it was only when I got into injury time, I said, I said to the guy beside me, I said, we're going to score in injury time. I actually felt we were going to score in injury time. I, I, we I did not, too. We were, not, we were knocking on the door. We were knocking on the door for so long in the last 20 minutes it was coming it was definitely coming and it usually is the other way you say that about Villa but it was definitely coming we got the goal we got the three points and they are vital three points now vital three points because uh, did Alkmaar finish 1-0? Uh, I was just actually literally typing to try and find what the, what yeah. the score was there so uh, 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 uh. I don't always goes to him <laughs> Will you give your man a hand carrying in the keg into the store there, Paddy? For the love and honor of God. That, I don't wait. In the rubbish. I'm standing in the laneway that, here. The <laughs> that's what I was I thought he was I thought he was carrying a keg out of a store or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> um Alkmaar, 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 Alkmaar. What was the score? And the Alkmaar, Alkmaar match, do that, do that. One 0 Surely in the and comments at this stage. Yeah. It probably is, yeah, yeah. Alkmaar and the man sent off as well. Yeah, so they've they they beat uh Legia Warsaw. So Everyone is three points in the league now. Brilliant. You know, three points. So that's well, great. That, it's back to square one again. That, that's a decent result for us because, we're, 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 as you say, it's back to square one. We, we need to win the next one. But I, I don't think we can afford to mix up the team that much. I, I just, it just worries me. And we'll talk about it in a, in a different circumstance when we, when we get to the next game and see where we are after our, our two league games before then. But we've an international break. We're in the position we needed to be in at the end of tonight. That is the most important thing. We got the three points on the board. We won the game. We're going into Wolves. And fuck it, we better beat Wolves. Because we're a long time waiting on us to beat Wolves. Ah, fuck it, Penny. Go on, we've won our first game in Europe. First game in European group stages. Regardless of what the situation is in 13... What is it? Thir- 10 years? 13, 13 years, years. Whatever it is. 13 years. Fuck it. Yeah. I, I cracked open a can there, Paddy. Go in there and drink two or three more pints and then go away home. And wake up tomorrow morning and go, fuck it, it doesn't matter. We're all back to square one again. Everyone has three points. And uh, it doesn't matter how you win them as long as you win them. Do you think Do you think Man United are, are, are worried about 1999 when they scored two goals in injury time? Nah, they were flat as a pancake for the whole game. They're all, they're still celebrating their that 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 win. So um, I'm going to I'm going to celebrate this one tonight, and I think it should be I think it should be a joyous occasion. Look, as I say, he shuffled the deck. He's on record as saying the league is his is is his bread and butter. I know that's a cross for his own back, considering you, you, you know the the high the high expectation people have against Wolves. And I think we will go out all guns blazing against Wolves. And as you say, I hope we win the fake derby yeah. uh, against Wolves <laughs> uh, at the weekend. <laughs> and we will be like, back. I... I can't see the comments. I'm, I'm not trying to be negative. Anyway. But not, not in one bit trying to be negative. No, I know you're not. You're just being the honest. One thing, the one thing we needed today was three points. We got the three points. Yeah. But we also need to beat Wolves. And, and, and keep one eye on that. So if he if he does it on Sunday, and, we, and we're here at four o'clock on Sunday, having beaten Wolves, I will be absolutely over the moon. That is the most important thing. If we, if we can go and win on a Thursday night and win on a Sunday... That is something that ha- that has had many better man- better teams struggle over the years. So here we are in a position where we can go and prove people wrong that we we, we have the bounce back on a, on a Sunday. So let's see what happens on Sunday. Exactly, exactly. Look, and we've got the international break afterwards. There is a fantastic person, fantastic person in the comments. And if anybody's looking, I wonder why I'm having a big smile to myself. But that's my first can, so it's not because I'm inebriated. <laughs> but there is a fantastic person here. 
who is consistently commenting about that Dan Rollinson is beautiful. I agree. Dan Rollinson is a beautiful, beautiful man. And uh, But it's so funny. They're just consistent. Can we please talk about Dan Rollinson? We are now talking about Dan Rollinson being beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'm doing something with him um, on a podcast in a, in, in, a, in a couple of days' time. But I'm if glad, anybody I'm wants glad, to I'm know, glad you said it was on a podcast. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's it's it, it, could, it could be one for his only fans. I think it is. Um, I think that's what it is. But uh, it, now we know what Dan what Dan's burner account is on YouTube. That's what it is. It's called Do You Douche? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, no, listen. Look, I think uh, I think I think in the, uh, you know, realistically speaking, look, we said before the game, you have to pay a team respect. They were really well drilled. They were like an international team, and I. Do you know what? I love to see that. I love to see that. We got away with games like that last season as well. Going there, defending resolutely, catching a team on the break, winning one nil under Unai Emery when he first came in. We did it again. Did it with Dean Smith as well. Um, you know, so fair play to them. They were like an international team, as I say. They came and they were they they um they knew their limitations. They knew where they could try and hurt us. They tried to get in behind Kanza. And uh, and it didn't really work. Well, once that one good save, that 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 brilliant save actually, not good save, it was absolutely outstanding save. save. Brilliant. Emmy Martin has yeah. made in the first half. What a save coming right across yeah. his box, just brilliant. And their goalkeeper. Okay, I hold my hands up. Hold my hands up. I was reading about this team, and in in the 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 uh, piece I read about this team, I read four or five different uh, things about the about this team from four or five different people, and three of the five of them said the goalkeeper was a potential weak link. He was a bit flappy and he dropped the ball. The lad blocked marbles at stages today. Now, I know a lot of them were at him, but you still have to get your hand to them to block them in the right direction. And there, yeah. he, he was coming into massive areas and trying to grab balls in, in a forest of players. Fair play to him. I thought he was really, really good today. But uh, I'll be staying away from, from naming goalkeepers as being potential weaklings in future <laughs> because he blocked marbles today. And uh, yeah, as I said, do you know who, do you know who else gets, a, gets an honorable mention for me from the Villa team tonight? And it's Diego Carlos. He was in hard luck for two goals tonight. Uh, two good headers. One one shocker of a header. We've all been there where we go up and we think we're going to absolutely smash in the back yeah. of the net. It hits off and the opposite side of our head. Yeah. yeah, and goes back out to the guy who head, who, who crossed the ball to you. It's just a horrible, horrible header. Um, another honorable mention I want to give, give tonight is, and I know it wasn't perfect, and I know it was frustrating at times, but I'd much prefer see Leon, see Leon Bailey fronting up a player like that than trying to run 40 yards of the ball at his feet and losing it at the halfway line. I'm okay with what he did tonight, clipping balls into the box. I think it was better. It's not perfect. I, I do think it was better, and I do think in the formation we played, especially coming from the left, um, it suited him a small bit more. Uh, but look, the end product wasn't there. From was, wasn't there. From he was actually in hard luck for a goal. I thought he was going to score at one stage, but um, I could I could have said that about eight of our players. Uh, the only player I think tonight that kind of for me kind of comes out of it with um, who just just really really annoyed me. I think was Yuri Tielemans during the game today. You can't pass the ball through a player, and until we invent teleportation, Yuri Tielemans. Has to figure out how to play those and, slide rule passes correctly. And I'm go I'm go I'm gonna take 30 seconds and kind of contradict you that every time the ball broke, he was there, he did his job, he was covering everything, he was excellent in defense. Um every time the ball broke in the tackling position, he was there and he gave the ball off. He didn't always play the right ball, but it will come good for him. He's a decent player. Um with regards to Leon Bailey, I think playing off the left is exactly where he should be playing. I enjoyed watching him tonight playing off the left. That is his natural position for me. Whether him or Craig Butler or anyone else wants to tell you otherwise, I believe that that is the future. Bailey off the left, Zaniolo off the right. Uh, Zaniolo will come good. He, he didn't have his best night tonight, but he will come good. Yeah, it's like you, you can't win. We get slated. We get slated, Paddy, when we say that Bailey isn't good. We get slated when we say he plays all right. Like You just can't win. You can't win. Uh, <laughs> just look at you can't win. You just can't. Like it's as simple as that. <laughs> you try and be diplomatic once in a while, and then all of a sudden people are giving up all over the shop. For God's sake. That's I love it though. I love it. Look, as I say, that's what that's what this course is all about. I'm not having to go out anyway. Look, exactly. we'll we'll Neil, see things I'm, I'm gonna love you and leave you because it's just starting to rain here and I'm outside, oh. so good luck. 
Mind yourself. Up bye, 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 bye. Up the villa is right. No, I'm joking. I'm joking when I say that. Look, I know. Look, we'll say things that people don't agree with. But as they say, we're watching. We're, it's, look, look, at the end of the day, we know not this team isn't perfect. And there's some players will love some players and some players will, or some people will love some players and some people won't love some players. Like, I'm a lot higher on Clement Longley than probably 90% of the people in the chat. Um, I probably will be proven wrong at some stage during the season but um as i say we got we call it on, on certain instances and things that we see in games and for leon bailey i think that i think he did better tonight uh i, I preferred seeing what he did tonight as opposed to as i say sometimes having to pick the ball up from deep and running with it i think there's something to build on there with him if he is getting the ball higher up the field um on the left hand side as opposed to the right hand side like zaniolo as well i think zaniolo uh conversation on zaniolo with regards to his um like, like, I, I don't know whether I preferred him being more central tonight. I don't know whether I preferred him being more central, and I have, I'd have to watch the game back again. I'm actually looking forward to watching that second half back again because I think it's a true reflection of what the team uh, will be set up to do. And by the way, I love this tree at the back. I, I, I love it. I love the tree at the back. And when Pau Torres is in there, obviously his passing ability is good. I've just said I'm higher on Longley, but obviously Pau Torres is better than him and I don't want Longley to start or anything like that. I'm just higher on him as, as a backup option that we have. Um, but I, I'm I'm really liking this tree at the back. And, and the way I'm, why I'm liking it is because I'm liking Kanza Carlos Pau Torres. I love Kanza at the moment. I was very critical of him at the start of last season. I thought he started a small bit sheepish, as did most players under Steven Gerrard. But since Unai Emery has come in, he's just been a colossus. And a lot of good words have been spoken about him today, being omitted from the England squad. There's a lot of statistics going around about where he ranks within defenders and English defenders in the Premier League overall statistics. And, and he should have been in that team today, in, in that, that squad announcement today. And he's just really good. He's really solid and dependable. And he's the one player, I suppose, that no one ever gives out both you know if you're in the if you're in the part of the, the the fan base that wants a bit of rotation to keep players fresh nobody ever wants Ezra Kanza to be to be rotated because he's becoming so pivotal to this team and long may I continue because I thought he was really good again tonight albeit and and actually he had one shot I think I was I was, I was watching Twitter I was I was reading Twitter and and uh, I don't know is Dobby Williams is he listening to it listening here or is he on on the, the stream but Dobby said there's only one thing for this and it was Nezri Kanza Thunder Thunder Bastard at one stage and next thing the ball dropped him about two minutes later and he had a shot albeit it was blocked but um. He's becoming that leader, as I said, that's somebody who's, who's standing up and, and trying to get things going. But uh, getting back to Zaniolo, um, playing playing centrally, I think I preferred him there. I think I liked what he did. I think I like to see him getting in. Like, I think I like to see him getting in and around the play a bit more as opposed to having the play fed to him. Um, and I don't know if that makes sense to, to, to the, the way that I've said it there. And I'm just going to turn off the TV here because uh, there's a lot of flashing going on. Um, and not the good kind, uh, and it won't turn off now. Um, but I, I, I think I, I liked him getting in there with his height. I liked him getting flicks and things. I, uh, there was one or two times where he flicked the ball on, obviously, the bicycle kick in the first half. Um, he has the capability to do both to play inside and to go out wide as well. And uh, uh you know, we hadn't really seen him play as an actual center forward. And let's be honest, himself and Watkins were playing as a two up top today, um, in that second half, and I liked it. I, I, albeit we couldn't get much going into our strikers because of their two banks uh, of of five essentially, but I liked it. I, I liked what I saw. And when Bertie came on as well, I liked the way that, that uh, he he's got good movement, um, Zaniolo. And and Maddie Cash was going on the overlap for Bertie uh, when he came on, but Zaniolo was making was was kind of making darts out wide and then turning back in left, uh, turning back inside again. Should I say to? Uh, to be there for crosses that came in. So he understood his role is what I'm trying to get at here when he went up up to the center forward position. And I kind of like to see Una Emery explore that more again. And, and he will do, obviously. I've said that since he's been brought in. He will do it. This is the first time we've kind of got to see it. But um, I liked his movement. I liked his movement when he was there. Specific, and I know we were camped on their, their, the edge of our box, but uh, that's what you need when you've got two banks of five. You need somebody who's got a bit of movement in there. So... Uh, um, while he's not perfect again, and just like with Leon Bailey, certainly wasn't a perfect performance, certainly wasn't an absolutely outstanding performance. It was just better, a bit better is what I would say than what we've seen. And um, uh, it did certain things a bit better than what we've seen so far. Uh, and I think that's okay to say. Um, that's really it. Uh, we got out of jail. 
1-0 win, 95th minute. No one will ever remember that uh, in 10 years' time. But people will remember it, but it's not going to be consequential uh, with regards to, to, to the rest of our season. We move on forward w- w- with that win. The group is now tied up at three points apiece for every single team. So we pretty much start afresh and we go again. Acknowledge we've gotten out of jail and and, and see what happens. The team is learning how to play three games in six days, three games in seven days. It's tough for any team. It's tough for, and it's it's even more especially tough for a team who can who names two goalkeepers and 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 seven outfield players on on their bench. Um, when the other the, the the team that's coming from the perceived lesser league is able to name twelve substitutes, we're not in the position to do that. And the reason we're not in the position to name twelve substitutes is because you can't just lump a lot of young players on the bench. They have to be with the academy for X amount of years, so on and so forth. That's why Omari Kellyman isn't involved. Um, Jacob Tanswell summed it up perfectly. I got this wrong before. I presumed he would have been named as a player, uh, but because we couldn't name four um, homegrown players within the squad, we had to lessen the amount of players we could name. I think it's by two. So therefore, we are limited in who we can name. So we've actually got a smaller squad than most clubs in, in the Europa Conference League. Um, so, and, and that's another reason why I think Rotation or semi-rotation is, is is quite important because we're not even shuffling from a 24-man deck in, in our in our squad in the Europa League. I think we're shuffling from like a 22-man deck. Sorry, 25-man deck. We're, we're shuffling from like a 22-man deck. If I'm um, I'm open to correction on that, but we've less players. We can name less players in our squad um, than other other teams can due to the in our A sheet, should I say, due to the other teams can due to the fact that we um you have to facilitate four homegrown players, four academy or four academy born players, four association um trained players as well. So that that is something to take in take into account. Um would have been great if we if we were two, three, four nil up tonight and we could have brought Tommy O'Reilly off the bench. I think everybody's looking forward to seeing him. He's definitely been a standout player for the Academy and maybe we will see him as the as the games go on. But we brought the three people, four people off the bench today. Um, great to see Bertrand Troy get back out and back, back out in the field. Uh, Douglas Louise and Maddie Cash absolutely changed the course of this game, and Villa come out with one one nil win. It's one of those ones. Draw a line under it. Worse if we lost, and uh, we move on towards Wolves. I'm going to leave everybody at that. Thank you so much, everybody, for for listening. I know there was a ton of comments. We didn't get to a whole pile of comments. Um, we didn't get to a whole pile of comments, but. That is, uh, but like really, really, really great to get that win today. Really great to get that win today. And albeit a flat performance, albeit not a dominant performance from the point of view of the first half, there was a lot, there was positives that you can build on in that game. Diego Carlos coming back. I think he's beginning to look better and better, as I said before. And other little bits and pieces I mentioned, I'll just be going back over them again. Uh, and, and we're 28 minutes into this podcast. But thanks so much, everybody, for watching and listening. We'll be back again tomorrow with a Wolves preview with uh, Sir Patrick. Um, we're also going to be trying out something. Um, uh, potentially, we're going to have something coming very soon um, with a, where we will do a weekly kind of roundup of Aston Villa women's team. Look out for that. It'll be coming in the next few days also. And also during the international break, for those of you who've been asking, we will be releasing footage uh, in three parts of our live podcast that we had on the 9th of September. So the international break is coming up to keep you guys going with a bit of Villa chat and laughing at us, sweating our absolute nads off and drinking profusely on the stage um, uh, for the live podcast, which was great fun. It was actually brilliant fun. And for anyone who was there, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. But um, we will be releasing the footage of that over the international break as well. So you guys will get to see great chats with Max and Simon from Villa on Tour. Um, you get to see a great chat with Adam Adam Slack from the Struts, uh, who was there as well. And last, but by no means least, Dan Bardell and Ian Taylor, who are an absolute hoot as well. So that's coming up over the international break. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. If you're not following this channel, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the like, hit the notification button as well there, so you'll be notified of these when they do come out. I'm going to plaster them all over Twitter because I'm pretty proud of the live event that we put on as well. And uh, we're in discussions to put another one on. So if anybody is... Uh, uh, likes it they see from this it was our first attempt we were nervous as hell but we can definitely build on it we really enjoyed it so hopefully you guys enjoy it when you see it on uh, on youtube as well 
uh, later on next week. So thanks very much, everybody. Hope you, hopefully you have a great night. Um, we will see you again tomorrow with a pre-match, uh, pre a match preview of the Wolves game. Drink it in. European win. First of many. And we're on our way to, the, to win this league, I hope. But uh, until the next time, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy. And all that's left to say is up the villa. Yeah.